Hello and welcome to the all new Nissan Leaf Ascenta. My name is Josh and I'm going to be taking you with me on my day in this vehicle. We're going to go around and show you just how easy this vehicle is to charge. We're going to show you all the features on the vehicle and my personal experience of using my day to day activities with an EV and I hope you really enjoy it. So I wanted to start with giving you a walk around on the car. So this is the Nissan Leaf Ascenta model in the flame red, which is actually the base color for the car. So right here, we're not showing you anything too extravagant. This is an entry model vehicle. You'll be able to get this for a much more affordable price. Uh, but I just want to show you how well equipped this car is and just how good it is to look at really. Really, really nice vehicle. 100% electric as well. See, very stunning, very spacious also. Even got nice features, just up on the nice chrome door handles. Keyless entry on there as well, that ease of access. Come round to the rear. Let's have a look in the boot. Just show you that that space in here. Like, look how deep that is. Um, I'm guessing because it's an electric car as well. There's there's no fuel tank, so they can make these boots a lot deeper. I've got my charging cables here and there. See, there's actually a three pin plug, so you've got a means of charging it. Any sort of domestic socket, and I've also got a safety pack in here with high vis jackets, first aid kit, traffic triangle. But yeah, very very spacious boot. Very deep, in fact. And then as we come round to the side here show you the wheels We've got 16 inch alloy wheels here and then in the rear doors one thing here as well very nice cloth seats very nice which one thing i've actually noticed about cloth seats is compared to my car it's got leather on is when, when you get into this car in the winter and then in, in the summer you're not it's not the seats aren't so cold and they're not so you don't get stuck to them in the summer as well We've got usb ports here just in there there is heated seats in the rear on this one because it's been an optional extra that's been selected um, but other than the heated seats this car's all standard really nice to look at and let's show you the inside as well so as we step inside the vehicle got a nice trim again nice cloth seats with the blue stitching makes it a bit different you've got a manly adjustable seat so everything you know just as you'd expect in a normal car really nothing too extravagant to throw you off as we step inside so switch the car on i'm just going to put my foot on the brake and press this button down here and my display lights up wow that is quiet there is no sound to that at all so um the only way you can tell that the engine's on well not the engine the motor in fact is actually this green car here but look, listen to that there's no noise nothing And then this will be your, your gear stick, if you will. So you can put it into gear just by sliding it like that. So that's put that into drive. And then if I do the same upwards, pops it into reverse there as well. My rear camera comes on. So you get a, a color reversing rear camera on this car and you might be able to hear the beeping. So all electric cars have now got this uh, legislation where they've got to make a noise when reversing, uh, but you can switch that off. And if I just press the P button here, it puts it into park again. So that would stop me moving. And then we've got this nice touch screen on here with DAB radio. Because of course we'd already seen BBC it radio too, love that. <laughs> and then you can Bluetooth your phone up to it as well. You just do this in the connection setting. So there's lots of technology here. See, so yeah, I'm all connected up. And then down here, you've got your climate control so we can switch the heating on, do all these bits. There's nice features in here. See the heated seats, there, an optional extra. But other than that, the rest of this car is standard. And these are your different driving modes. You've got the Eco and the E-Pedal, which I will talk to you about later on in the journey. Um, and I've also got adaptive cruise control on here. So really well equipped car for a base model. It's got automatic lights just on here that you can see. It's got automatic windscreen wipers, electric windows, electrical adjustable door mirrors. Really, really well equipped vehicle, this. So just before we set off, I wanted to focus on, you see we've got 100% charge on the vehicle here. 167 miles um, i'm going to do a drive now from coventry to leamington and i'm going to see how much charge it uses i'm going to be using a few different types of roads a bit of the motorway on the a46 and i want to see what we get so i'm going to see how many miles we do and how much it reduces my charge but the other thing i wanted to show you before is if i put the heating on like that you see it changes my range so you can actually work out how much your range is going to be depleted just by putting the uh, heating on at the start and then you can also see that the car's in eco mode and if i take that out again it's going to reduce my range because i'll be using more of the electricity for a, a stronger performance on the car 
And the final feature I wanted to show you just before we set off is the Apple CarPlay. So you can see my phone's plugged in with a normal USB here, it's charging as well. It also works with Android Auto, but I've got the iPhone. So if we press this here, got all my apps that have loaded up on here, as you can see. Google Maps, Spotify, WhatsApp, Zap Maps to show you with the charging as well. Now I've got the sat nav plugged in to my Barbers in Leamington, which we're gonna go to now. And if I just press the Google Maps, it's got the sat nav built in. So no, no need to pay for a sat nav on the car. I can use it from my phone, which to be honest, I think is actually gonna work better than a, than a normal car sat nav. So we'll give you my experience on that now, but that's set. So we've got a 9.7 mile drive, 157 miles of range. Let's see what the real life range that we actually get is. So guys, just wanted to give you a bit of feedback. Um, I'm so far I've just got out of Coventry on the way to the 46 and the car's telling me I've done 3.1 miles um, I've used 3 miles of range through left so it's telling me that around cities it is very very accurate the range when you're doing so, so far we're doing about 30 40 mile an hour um, the range seems to be very accurate for what you'll actually achieve um, now building up to speed which actually is surprisingly easy in a car like this it's like flipping a light switch with the power um, but getting up to sort of 60, 70 mile an hour now, um, going to see how that affects the range of the vehicle and what the real life uh, expectancy is. So I'll touch point with you once we arrive. So we've made it to the destination uh, of Barbers and Leamington and we can see that I've done exactly 12 miles and when we left the range was 157 and it's now 145. So when I got onto the uh, A46, I did notice that the range was going a bit quicker because we were doing sort of 70 mile an hour. Um, it's It kind of felt like, you know, if you're running a phone on, on YouTube videos all day, the battery's gonna go a bit quicker, isn't it? But as soon as I got back onto the sort of 30, 40, 50 mile an hour roads, um, it started to go the other direction. I was actually getting more range um, than the car was telling me. So it's averaged out very well. Um, we've only used 8% and 12 miles of range just to do that journey from Coventry to Leamington. Sat nav was excellent, by the way. So I had my uh, Spotify on here. Yeah, it's just loading up there. So I had the Spotify screen on like this. And whilst I was driving, my sat nav directions were just popping up on here. And I found that really handy, actually. So as I was saying before, like you, you don't have a sat nav built in the car. But as long as you've got your phone with you, it's, it's almost better than one, really. I found that really, really helpful. Um, and the other thing which I picked up on quite well was the blind spot monitors in the car here. So if I just put the window down, you can see just here that there's the blind spot indicators. And if you're not too sure what blind spot monitors do, um, you might have seen them on other people's cars. So when you're driving down the motorway and somebody's in your blind spot, a little orange light will pop up on that indicator there. So you see as these cars are coming past me, if that were the motorway or a dual carriageway, their little orange indicator would come on to tell me it's not safe to move out and if i did put my indicator on whilst that light was on it would actually beep so it's really nice safety feature on, a, on an entry model car that's very impressive really a big fan of that so we've uh, just gone out of the barbers and whilst i was in there actually i was thinking the amount of time i just spent in there especially waiting to begin with probably waiting about half an hour and then actually in the chair another half an hour if i'd put my car on charge obviously it didn't really need it at the moment but if you were to find somewhere uh, just local to put it on charge and you know, an hour's an hour's charging on a normal one that would probably get you another sort of 20 percent on your vehicle so again just just standard day, daily things like that really um when you're just going shopping haircuts all those sorts of bits and bobs perfect times to really just whack the car on charge top it up um and yeah you don't there's no, nothing to really worry about because i mean i've got plenty of range in the vehicle but again it's just making i think what i'm getting the grasp of is when you've got an electric car it will kind of just change your mindset and you've just got to think about you know you've got these uh, apps you can download like zap maps and you'll be able to find all the different places that you can charge your car that meet with your your daily needs and where you're going to be so you can kind of plan your journeys out plan parking um and i think there's actually one there's actually a um a bp pulse point just around the corner from here um, but yeah, I'm just going to pop into the shops now. Uh, I've got a nice weekend away, so I'm just going to get some new shirts, fresh trim and all that bits and just standard stuff. And I'll catch up with you guys shortly. Hey guys, I just wanted to touch in again, actually. I'm using this, um, just been trying out the e-pedal really through Leamington Town Centre. And I think there's a road close just down, just down on the right. So there's a massive traffic down the parade. Um, but this e-pedal is an absolute game changer for me. I'm just trying it now. And so I'm stuck in traffic feet completely off the pedals and normally in an automatic if you're in drive you'd roll forward and you'd have to hold your foot on the brake constantly where this i let go of all the pedals and the car holds the brakes for me 
And when I want to move forward, as the traffic just keeps stopping and starting and moving forward, you just tap the accelerator and you go. And as soon as you want to stop, you let go of the accelerator and it puts the brakes on for you. So I'm just using one foot, one pedal, and it just makes being in traffic feel a little bit less stressful, a little less tedious. Because um, that's the worst part about driving, it's just constantly stopping and starting. And, um, but yeah, this is, this is amazing actually. And um, I can see every time that it breaks, it's regenerating um, energy back into the battery as well. Uh, it's probably not doing so much under the lower speeds, but you know, if you were driving sort of 30 mile an hour and then you're stopping and using the brake and putting energy back into the battery that way, it's a very, um, very practical feature actually. Um, not something that you could, you could have on a normal car, so big tick for the uh, EV there. We are going to show you how to do a domestic charge socket. Um, basically, if you've not got any uh, charging points at home, you've, you know, you don't, you don't have to get one installed. Um, you can actually just plug the charger into a domestic socket. So you see, I've got one running into the house just here. You could obviously get one installed just on the wall outside if you owned an electric vehicle or the leaf, of course. So that'd be quite a nice place to just put one. Very simple job to do. But you can have the charger just running out the window here come to the front of the car as I showed you before so you just uh, hold the button down here pops the charger open and um, we've got our type 2 charger just on the right here and if I just plug that in just push it in like so makes a little noise to say that it's locked and you can see just on there that that's now charging so if you go to like friends or family's house or anything like that you've always got a means of charging the vehicle now that is obviously the slowest method of charging the car but as you can see at the moment, I've done a lot today already and I've only used 10% of the vehicle's charge. Um, so how often are you really gonna be charging it that much? This is just a simple means of charging it. You don't have to pay any extra costs and you can do it from any house as long as you've got a window relatively near your drive and there's a way to make it even more appropriate on the wall. Okay, and now, now that we've just got that on charge, another thing that I've noticed just whilst I've been using the vehicle is um, you get a lot of SUVs and people want these higher seats. But if you look at the leaf, look at the rear seat, how it's lifted up like that it's a really nice height to get in and out of quite a comfortable step inside plenty of leg room for me now i'm a fairly average sized gentleman there's plenty of space in there very spacious kind of seating positions very comfortable give me a couple of arm rests and i'll be tucked up in here for a few hours quite happily um even if you look at the front as well if we just come around to here Again, it's just kind of lifted up, and I think that's just the battery underneath, because it runs underneath the car. It lifts the seats up to give you a, a better seating position, and that higher seating position is quite popular these days. Again, just very easy. I could imagine if you were getting car seats and kids into the car or elderly passengers, that it'd be a very um, very suitable very suitable thing. But yeah, that's definitely, definitely something I quite like about the car. It's not on the floor. You know, like you get a lot of hatchbacks and... You know, saloons and things and you lower down where the leaf that's a lot more practical that is i like that okay guys so now just going to do something that probably a lot of you guys will be doing with your leaf if you decide to get one is the school run um so just had the car on that domestic charge for literally about 15 20 minutes um it's only gone up a couple of percent because it's quite a slow charge but again if you were to put that on charge overnight you know you'd probably say your car was on 30 percent you put it on charge overnight you'd have a full charge again by the morning and that's without having to fork out eight nine hundred quid for an electric charger um so yeah good means of doing so if you go to a friend's house you've always got that there uh, but yeah this car is just wonderful to drive i'm, a, I'm actually just going to try it out of eco mode once we get onto the onto, onto the a roads just here actually just pulling out of the estate good yeah, so when you just take it out of eco, wow, and the, might be the power, yeah. I don't know if you can hear that, but just as I put my foot down, it's just boom, gone. <laughs> it's like a sport mode for the car, really. Really, really smooth, that is. I didn't think drawing an electric car would be um, quite so fun, but that, God, you can't get bored of that. Just delivery is excellent. It's, it's just, there's no gear changes, there's no delay, it's really smooth. Um, like that. But I could see, especially if you were, you know, if you're on a country road and you've got to overtake a tractor and you just want that extra confidence, you could just, it's just a button just here, just in front of where I've got the camera actually, you just tap the button, nothing else, you literally just press the button and it puts it in that, into that uh, out of eco mode. Um, although it does, uh, you will lose a bit of range from it, but then again, it's like if you put a petrol car into sport mode, you'd lose a bit of fuel from it as well. So, but then that's a nice experience. If you had to do a test drive, I'd definitely, uh, 
recommend trying that out. Hi guys, uh, so we've finished the school run, popped in, had some food and now I'm off to the gym in Coventry. So we'll take the car back from Leamington up to Coventry, another run down the motorway, um, few little A roads as well. Um, as you can see on the screen here, uh, get rid of the voice assistance bit, uh, we've got, <clears throat> you can see just behind it, there's a range of 120 miles left on the car. We've used 21% and 27.3 miles today, so not not a load of driving but you can see the amount of things that I've done um, and we've still got this much range left so you can see that just to use the car really for your day-to-day -day activities and this is one of my more productive days um, it's you know I wouldn't have to charge this I've charged it what twice a week to do this every single day so plenty of range not had any problems like that one thing I just wanted to show you before we went back was you can change the display on the screen if you're using these arrows here and you can change what's on there and you see you've got this average miles per kilowatt so i'm just going to reset that and i just want to see what we achieve on the journey back so it's probably about a 16 mile drive back uh, to coventry to where we want to be so i want to see what we're averaging um and when that will work out the realistic range really for a, for a normal drive uh, but yeah you can see if you scroll through you've got all these different different screens stations you're listening to and i can't get over that display on there i really really like that uh, again still got the heating on at 20 degrees even got the heated seat on as well okay so here we are we've arrived at the gym um you can see that we've done about 16 17 miles we've averaged 4.3 miles per kilowatt as well so that's actually a really good average there if you do 4.3 times 40 you're looking at you know about the range that the car's advertised at and i've done a mixture of motorway a and b road a bit of a city roads and in, in commentary as well um so it does show that really the, the advertised range is achievable um unless you unless you're driving on a motorway all the time um you're going to be able to get that 168 miles out of the car really as long as you drive it fairly sensibly um obviously i've been using it in eco mode used a bit of the e-pedal used a little bit of it out as well um but to do what have we done today we've done We've done haircut, we've done shopping, we've done school runs, uh, we've driven to Coventry and back, we've been to the gym now, um, and I've only used 32% of the car, so really good run at the moment. Um, just going to pop in and then we'll go from there. Also, I just wanted to touch on the Apple CarPlay that I've been using today. Really enjoyed this feature, actually. It's very, it's just a nice, you know, even when you just listen to your music, just to have that image there, it's quite a, it just sits nicely in the car, it adds a bit of colour to your display. Um, but just a really nice feature um, you can see all the songs you can control it all from the steering wheel as well so it's nice and convenient for you whilst you're driving um, but yeah just a special shout out to that and then to be able to use your um your sat nav as well you know your google maps your ways um, both apps on here it works it's a little bit glitchy because i'm recording at the moment but yeah to have these apps on here is fantastic yeah really especially enjoyed that feature so there we are, we're back to Nissan now after a day out in the Nissan Leaf Centre, 40 kilowatt model. I've had a pretty good experience, I've really enjoyed the car actually, um, very very surprisingly nice to drive actually. Um, you know, m m myself as a quite a petrol advocate, um, it's actually been quite an experience for me, um, finding out all the different you know, all the different driving modes, all the different things that are available, and actually just how spacious this car is, definitely something that I'd recommend. Just going to give you one more tour around the car, and we'll leave it there. So here we are again. You can see the auto lights, they're on. You've got the daytime LED runners just at the top here. Halogens on, the Ascent model. But I've thoroughly enjoyed the experience today. Um, I really do recommend getting down to your local dealer, having a test driving one of these cars. If you've not driven electric before, it will take you by storm. Even in, it's just look look at the size of it. The doors there and everything. It's very extremely spacious. And the rear, rear rear room here as well. You can comfortably get three passengers in either side there. But yeah, it's just so much. But the doors, there's plenty of room there. Very high up seats. And as we touched on before with the boot, <coughs> I mean, look how deep it is. <laughs> it could fit fit plenty of suitcases in there you've got your charging cables just tucked away nicely here not taking up too much space obviously i've not tied this one up but yeah it's a very practical electric car i think that's what it's got going for it practicality comfort reasonable height to get in and out of um, and then be the nissan it's it's loaded with technology even on the entry model very very satisfied and the range is actually realistic um Obviously, when you do your motorway miles, you're not going to get that 168. Um, but the display, everything's where it should be. 
indicators, lights, wipers, touchscreen, all the car alignment control buttons. It's all straightforward. There's none of these digital buttons that you know don't work properly. It's just all proper buttons and simple to use, simple to get hold of. And I love this gear. I love this gear stick as well. Just literally just bang, drive, bang, reverse, park. How simple could that be? All your switches are just within in an, within arm's reach. All your buttons and windows. It's just everything where, where they'd normally be in a petrol car. You're not being thrown off. There's no silly displays. Nice and simple. You've got a normal speedometer. You can have a digital one as well. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I hope you've enjoyed your experience. And I hope the video has been insightful. And I look forward to maybe seeing you guys and creating some more. Thanks for watching.